Hi there, I just wanted to make a quick part two video to the one I made this morning entitled COVID-19, who made it and what they stood to gain. And I got rather rudely cut off at the end of that video as I was trying to demonstrate an interview with this US virologist who was explaining his alarm at releasing COVID-19 patients back into the community after being told that they were virus free. You want to release a patient and say you're healthy enough to leave. What I find alarming is we are releasing all these patients, telling them they are virus free and they go back to the community. It's not your average SARS, it's not your average MERS. Uh, uh, many people, including me, we start calling it a very mysterious, very cryptic virus because we don't understand it. And Well, there we have it, folks. Um, he's calling it the very cryptic virus because he doesn't quite understand why it's behaving so similarly to HIV and he doesn't seem even to um, quite honestly know the fact that it has these HIV inserts uh, which is very puzzling really considering that he's an e expert in virology and I'll leave you to decide how it is that he is um, so out of touch with the um, real facts about this virus and um, in the meantime we'll just have a quick look later on where he, where he touches upon the subject of vaccines and um, the lack of um, any sound evidence to show that they are going to provide any permanent uh, solution to this virus and he explains why very clearly even if we have a vaccine today uh, it's not going to help i think people don't realize that vaccines don't work for every individual that gets the vaccine. Vaccine is a preventative thing. Vaccine is really helping your immune system to kickstart. Your, your, your immune system is really what protecting you. The vaccine is, is just helping, pointing to the immune system where to go. The information that we're lucky there we are. It's like asking somebody directions, isn't it? Um, the chances of you getting there are increased, but it's no guarantee. It's um, an indication for your immune system about where to uh, find the enemy and how to attack it. But there's no 100% guarantee that it's going to provide you with uh, permanent 100% immunity or, for that matter, provide any permanent end to the virus problem. And uh, he seems to be at least very accurate about that. And this then prompted me to have a closer look into the last 40 years of HIV vaccine research, which uh, I think everybody should be looking at right now, given the um, information that um, we have now about this virus, because this is going to give us a very clear insight into what we can expect in the future about um, COVID-19 vaccines, very clearly. and. Um, of course we find much of the same sort of uh, narrative reiterated here that we've been hearing over the past few weeks you know developing an hiv vaccine is challenging and of course it's so very challenging when you're making billions out of managing the symptoms of patients and seeking to expand that business even further and um, they also go on to say rather worryingly uh, there are no documented cases of an HIV infected person developing an immune response that cleared the infection. Now repeat that because it is very clear. There are no documented cases of an HIV infected person developing an immune response that cleared the infection. Researchers are working to define and understand the responses that may protect against HIV. In other words, to say that very unfortunately this whole uh, soundbite about herd immunity and permanent dis antibody um, protection is unfortunately all bogus and um, this is clarified you know and reiterated in the following paragraphs that keep reminding us that they've made progress but they're never going to arrive at the very at the destination very conveniently and uh, they're always working to do more remember uh, but unfortunately yes no chance of ever arriving at the destination which is all terribly convenient and um, this then um, uh, also explains you know some of these stories that we hear coming out of China now that um, such as this one here China in focus 
Um, China has been saying the epidemic is under control in the country. This comes as Chinese leader Xi Jinping is seen wearing a mask, leading many to question the true situation. There we go. Many are wondering, you know, if China has now got this under control. And of course, you know, actions speak louder than words. Uh, if they're running about still, you know, six to eight weeks ahead of us, remember, still wearing masks, still battling with this thing, then it's very clear that the HIV element to this virus is giving them untold uh, problems and woes that uh, could very likely be plaguing us in six to eight week, weeks' time. And uh, this then leads me on to a um, piece of text that was copied and pasted from a medical forum that uh, I've given a close look at and uh, it's quite lengthy and it, it was left me in no doubt that it's genuine by the end of it. I could have sure, or even by halfway through for that matter, or even, even in the first few lines. But anyway, I shall um, uh, explain what this chap has to say, or woman for that matter. It says, we don't know uh, what sex wrote this, but the following is from a medical forum. The writer prefers to stay anonymous because presenting any narrative different than the official one can cause you a lot of stress in the toxic environment caused by the scam which surrounds COVID-19 these days. So interesting to note in the first few lines that these healthcare professionals are increasingly aware of the fact that this is a scam. There is a scam uh, revolving around COVID-19. Goes on to say that I work in the healthcare field. Here's the problem. We are testing people for any strain of a coronavirus not specifically for COVID-19. There are no reliable tests for a specific COVID-19 virus. So in other words, to say that no specific test for the one with four HIV inserts, uh, we only have tests for the normal coronavirus family, so every test comes up positive for normal flu symptoms, which is very handy for keeping the death rate down. If you're mixing in 90%, you know, um, of people, or, you know, 80, 90%, I should imagine, with normal flu. Uh, goes on to say there are no reliable agencies or media outlets for reporting numbers of actual COVID-19 virus cases. Um, then this needs to be addressed for first and foremost every action and reaction to COVID-19 is based on totally flawed data. We simply cannot make accurate assessments. So in other words to keep the death rate down we're having to confuse medical professionals no end which then opens the debate as to whether it's worth diluting these figures you know, and lying to the public as much as we are if it's confusing healthcare professionals as much as it is. And um, also raises the next question, would an AIDS test work for COVID-19? Because I think it would be far more likely to work for COVID-19. Seems undoubtable to me that uh, any AIDS test would come out positive. Uh, but of course they're not allowed to use an AIDS test because that would send alarm bells ringing that we now have an air airborne AIDS flying around the hospital. And um, we should therefore be considering things like colloidal silver, you know, as um, a possible um, treatment. Uh, given in the, if you watch my first video, colloidal silver, COVID-19 and HIV, which I strongly advise that you watch. and. Um, how to the, uh, also look very briefly into profit in managing HIV symptoms and of course there is no end of the uh, articles and a wealth of information on how maybe you at home can go about uh, managing the symptoms of an HIV patient and study this as a subject uh, in great depth uh, and maybe even look into how profitable HIV drugs are etc etc I mean it couldn't be more obvious how much money there is in managing the symptoms of HIV um, which also um, is touched upon by this chap. This is a South Korean virologist who would like to tell you how low the death rate is in South Korea simply by diluting the numbers with th hundreds of thousands of normal flu cases, which is again, you know, terribly convenient from their point of view and looking good through the eyes of the world and having a death rate of less than 1%. He reels off some ridiculously low death rates here that he's managed to achieve simply by, you know, running hundreds of thousands of tests on normal flu patients. Makes him look like a genius, you know, like he's doing some kind of medical miracle when all he is is really a, just a, a number fiddler, you know, and a bit of a, um, a bit of a con artist when it comes to um, uh, number crunching. Now, um, uh, just one article briefly before we finish. This is in the Independent. Um, who latched on to the fact this is a few weeks ago that perhaps you know there's something else afoot here other than just the normal flu um, and yeah it goes on and on 
and I strongly suggest that in light of all this information that we do look more care closely at um, the subject of colloidal silver.